Amen. You can have your seat. Amen. If you have your Bibles handy, can you open your Bibles? We're going to the book of Numbers. We're going to start in chapter 9, and then we're going to go right to chapter 10. So it's going to be a combination. Amen. Numbers, the ninth chapter, verses 15 through 17. And it reads thusly, on the day the tabernacle, the tent of the covenant law was set up, the cloud covered it. From evening till morning, the cloud above the tabernacle looked like fire. That is how it continued to be. The cloud covered it, and at night it looked like fire. Whenever the cloud lifted from above the tent, the Israelites set out, and wherever the cloud settled, the Israelites encamped. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. You can have your seat. Amen. We are continuing with our series, Count Me In. Numbers 1 and 8, we started out in the Bible, the text, we learned that God is a God of what? Order. And the children of Israel through numbers one through eight, they're numbered, they're organized, they're prepared, and they're purified for the journey. And now there is a departure from Sinai. Israel is finally on the move. Only the move is in baby steps. Somebody say baby steps. Canaan is a few hundred miles away, but getting there, the journey will prove to be a lengthy one. And so we are now in Numbers chapter 9 and 10. That's where I'm going to be coming from. And both chapters deal with trusting God. Somebody say trusting God. Trusting God means learning to follow him. And you see Israel, they were following what we would say an invisible God. And what was in front of them was a symbolic representation, meaning God's tabernacle. And we talked about how the Levites, they were responsible for what? The sacredness, the tabernacle of God. And so it was God's tabernacle that housed the Holy of Holies. And it was to represent his presence, reminding them daily that God is with them always. Somebody say always. And so the text tells us in chapter 9 that God would provide a means to lead them forward. There was a cloud by day that settled over the tabernacle, and then at night there was a fire. Both the cloud by day and fire by night was God's way of leading the people of Israel out, letting them know when to move and when to keep still. And so if I was to leave a subject with you on today, it probably would be twofold. He spoke to me over there, so we're going to flow with that, however he decides to move. Amen, somebody. And so I heard him say this one first, pardon the interruption. Pardon the interruption. When we look at everything that has transpired leading up to chapter 9, there was some what? Interruptions. But if I could end it with this subject, we're on the move. Tell somebody, say, neighbor, we're on the move. <clears throat> How many know that in this journey, nobody likes to be interrupted? We have our plans, we have our list, we have things that we want to do, things that need to get done. But sometimes, how many know, right in the middle of your plans, right in the middle of your journey, God changes our plans. God will put a pause, God will stop us in our tracks periodically. And so I want to tell somebody that there are times when God will just tell you to wait while you're on your journey. How many know that there's a reason for the wait? <clears throat> and so I don't know about you, but I want to thank God for the pit stops that happens in my journey. Can you just holler out, Lord, thank you for the pit stops. I don't know about you, but there are a lot of us that have trouble with following God. We don't know when to move out and we don't know when to keep still. 
which is why we see many times the body of Christ running into problems and issues all because we have a tendency to rush. We have a tendency to always want to take shortcuts. We want the fast and the easy route to get to our destination. But then we find ourselves in places or landing somewhere that was never meant for you to settle in. It was never meant for you to what occupy. And it's at that time that God does what is necessary to redirect us and get us back on track. And that's what he did with the people of Israel. He got them back on track. Every now and then they wanted to get to Canaan. But God said, no, I got to allow some pit stops. They want to do things one way. But God said, no, I need to put some things in your remembrance. I need to remind you something. I needed to teach you something. Can you say it one more time? Lord, I thank you for the pit stop. Uh, I don't know about you, but I rather that God interrupts my plans or places a pause in my life to avoid any mishaps. Rather than me moving out ahead of him, all because I want to get there in a hurry. So God allows some pit stops. And if I was to share something that I have continually been learning during the course of my life, it says, Crystal, stay on track, even when it means wait. Even when it means wait. I know you know what your destiny is. I know that you know that God has spoken over your life and told you what he was going to do. I know you know what God has said over your life. But if I can just give you some, a bit of advice is that in your journey, follow God and whatever he allows, if he allows you to pause right there, tell somebody just do what you need to do, but follow God. And so uh, I want to talk to you because there are times when God will uh, put you on pause or will tell you to just wait. And the reasons for those is because there are lessons to be learned. And so to the people of God, I want to tell you that you must learn to wait. You must learn the lesson. You must welcome every interruption, every pause, because God's is, it's his way of inviting you to some unscheduled opportunities, some new connections. It could be a time of renewal or a time of refreshing. How many know you can drive on a long road trip, but every now and then you got to take a stop? Some of us get hungry on the way and we want a snack. Some of us is falling asleep at the wheel. We got to do something to wake ourselves up. It's okay to take what? Pit stops. And so it's the same application in our spiritual life that there are times when you just got to take a pause and stop so you can get renewed, so you can refuel, so you can stay before God and hear what he's saying about your what? Your next. You can't move out unless God is telling you what to do. So... I don't know about you, but I want what God has for me. And as I journey along, there are times when he will allow you to experience something new. There are things that he may see along the horizon that you may not see. There are times when he'll stop you because there's somebody you may meet on the road. He may say, I need you, Maurice, to go talk to this one. Uh, Or I may need this one to go talk to that one. You don't know who God has for you to minister to along your journey. And so, your pit stops in your life are important. Again, I want to remind you what we talked about two weeks ago. The process is just as important as the destiny. And so, Israel, they were to move. And they were to journey to wherever the cloud settled. And wherever it settled, they were 
make camp. The scripture says it like this. And the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle. And then after the children of Israel journeyed, and in the place where the cloud abode, the children of Israel pitched their tents. Verse 18 says, and at the commandment of the Lord, they pitched. As long as the cloud abode upon the tabernacle, they rested in their tents. Verse 20, and so it was when the cloud was a few days among the tabernacle, according to the commandment of the Lord, they abode in their tents. And according to the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. Israel had to learn when God says go, go. But they also had to learn when God says stay, stay. I heard someone say this, following God can be a long wait. But there's also times that when God will allow you to move forward. What is God saying to us right now in this season? Is it my season to move out or is it in my season to wait? And the people of Israel, they had what we would call a waiting season. And even though it was temporary, but God was setting them up. I want to come and tell the people of God on today that God is setting you up. You may not understand it. You don't know how it's all going to come together. But I want to encourage somebody. It may be temporary right where you at. And the wait may seem long. But I want to tell you that he is setting you up. And so we learn in the first eight chapters that before any move of God, there's got to be order. You can't occupy in chaos. You want something new. But I want to tell somebody you can't go further until God gets you together. Every promotion, every upgrade, every increase, there is always some purging. There's always some clear up and before you can move in your next God's got to take care of you where you are right now I want to tell somebody that in order for you to walk into your new God's got to strip you of some things God's got to remove some things you can't pour new wine into what Yeah. <laughs> 
many want to dismiss it, but there's a meaning, there's a reason by what God did. He allowed the death angel to pass over. Thank God that death did not come at my door when it tried to wipe me out on this week alone. But thank God for life. Can you high five your neighbor and say, neighbor, thank God for life? He tries to come at you at nighttime. He tries to speak to your thoughts. But I tell you to take authority over everything that does not align itself according to the scripture. You got the power. All you got to do is exercise your authority. So he said, Israel, I don't forget. Uh, he tells them, I need you to keep the feast of Passover. He said, recognize what I did for you back then. And when you keep those things in your remembrance, it will help you as you journey and move forward. What do you say? Forget not what God has done for you. Forget not his word. Forget not the points of prayer. Forget not the points of fasting and praying. Forget not those things because it will be those things that will take you into your next. Israel, do not forget. Number two, follow God's move. Follow God's move. Israel was to follow the cloud that would situate itself above the tent of the tabernacle. Wherever that cloud was settled, it was their cue to move towards the cloud. And if the cloud settled and didn't move, Israel was to pitch themselves and wait. Pay attention to the move of God. Pay attention to the move of God. For he will give you signs to inform you of your next. Ah, Crystal, what do you say in Proverbs 3, 5, it says, 6, trust in the Lord with what? All thine heart. Lean not to what? Your own understanding, but in all thy ways, what? And he will surely, even when it doesn't make sense, tell somebody, just follow God. Even when you can't trace him, tell somebody, just follow God. Even when you don't feel like it, tell somebody, just follow God. Uh, Romans uh, 12 and 2, he said, well, Chris, I, I don't know. Uh, that's why he says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You can't go nowhere if you don't know the book. Tell somebody, study time. My people are what? Destroyed because of what? The lack of knowledge. Uh, tell somebody, study time. Study, 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 study. Romans 12 and 2, it says, be not conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Follow God's move. Number three, and I'm almost done. Somebody say, listen for the sound. Woo. Are you ready to move? Are you ready to move? Tell somebody it's time to move, but we got to listen for the sound. It's time to sit ourselves and position ourselves to get ready for the expected. What we know what God will do. Tell somebody, listen for the sound. And the Lord. Chapter 10. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, he said, make two trumpets for yourself. And you shall make them of hammered work. And you shall use them 
for the calling of the congregation and for directing the movement of the camps. The priests were the ones that were responsible for sounding the alarm. They were the ones that were to take the trumpet and usher in a sound. <laughs> and there were two each made of silver and they were used to direct the movement of the camp for marching and for battle. And they were to assemble God's people. The priests of God got a special role. And as much as we want to dismiss them, as much as we want to mistreat them, as much as we want to take them for granted, you don't realize that their ear must be attentive to God's voice. It must stay right here. They can't sound anything if they don't hear from God. Tell somebody, pay attention to the sound. It behooves us to stay before God. So when God is ready to blow the trumpet, the people of God can assemble themselves together and get ready to march. Get ready to move out. Get ready to take what belongs to us. Pay attention to the sound. Something about uh, these two trumpets. It was different from the shofar. The shofar was sounded for the feast of atonement. That's another feast. We'll talk to you about it. But these two were used specifically. They were useful tools for their journey into the promised land. And without them, it would be difficult to assemble the nation to march towards their promise. <sighs> My God in heaven. The sound was to get Israel attention. It signified. I want y'all to write that down. The sound was to get their attention. Number two, it was to signify God's a promise. So whenever they blew the trumpet, if there was trouble ahead, it would signify to God and God would hear it and he would come to their rescue. Don't tell me when you blow your trumpet, whether it's your prayer life. He said the spirit in it makes the intercession. You can cry, you can moan, but I understand every last one of them. That's your trumpet. Sound your alarm. You in trouble, make a noise. You don't see your way, make a noise. You need God to heal you, make a noise. You want God to move on your behalf, make a noise. Tell somebody not only what you got to hear, but you got to sound you all, your alarm. You know what God needs. That's why the enemy does what he has to do to shut us up. Your voice is your weapon. Tell somebody, use what you got. So the sound was to get Israel's attention. The sound was a promise that God would fight my battle. Oh, and so the sound also was to signify that God's presence is what before us. The priests kept their eyes on the cloud, which represented the presence of God. And where that presence would lead them, they would follow. So it kind of it makes you think, what was Israel's problem? That they couldn't follow God. It's the same thing in the house of God. The people just will not listen. They don't want to be obedient. How are you going to get your, to your promise if you won't be obedient? If he can't trust you right now, how is he going to trust you with the extra? How is he going to trust you with the promise? How is he going to trust you with the upgrade? How is he going to trust you with the promotion? Can he trust you in your now?
God uses that same trumpet, and he will for the gathering of his saints. We're in a dress rehearsal. And sooner or later, he's going to come back and crack that sky. And he's going to see who is ready to hear the trumpet. And when it sounds, are you ready to assemble yourselves together? I don't know about you, but I suffered too much. I waited too long. And when he comes back, I'm going with him. I tell somebody, I'm going with him. Stand to your feet. Count me in. Thank God for the pit stops. It's those pit stops that is now enabling me to move on out. Tell somebody, say, neighbor, we ready to move on out. Come on, put your hands together one more time and bless him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. I just want to, it's a song. It says, it won't always be like this. God will perform. Yep, y'all get it. And sooner or later, he'll move in your favor. He's turning it around for me. Sorry, I forgot the verse. But one thing's for sure, it won't always be like this. God will perfect that concern with you. And soon or later, it'll work in your favor. Can I shake your hand? He's turning around for you. Come on, lift your hands and say, Lord, thank you for turning it around. Come on, tell you, just tell the Lord, thank you for turning it around. There may be one that may not know God in the pardon of their sins. I want to extend to you the invitation to come to Christ. As much as you may think he don't hear and see, he sees and he knows all things. Won't you come? If there's one that may not know him and you need him to come in and bring some order to your life. Won't you come for those that are going to listen and are hearing us be the live stream. God can change your life. And he does it. Why? Because he cares about you and me. Come on. There may be one that is listening or maybe one that's right here. But if you don't know him, just lift your hands right where you're at and close your eyes. We pray this prayer, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we bless you. Thank you for the word that was spoken because it spoke to me right where I'm at. Lord, I didn't understand the pit stops. I didn't understand why you made me wait. I got confused. I was baffled and and I kind of took things in my own hand. But you never allowed me to get too far and make a mess of things. And so I want to thank you for the pit stop. Thank you for bringing me back. Now, God, I surrender my life to you. I ask that you become Lord and master of my life. Wash me thoroughly and cleanse me so I can be ready for my next. I ask this in Jesus' name. Let every heart say amen. Come on, put your hands together and bless him. Amen. Pastor.